Welcome to this edition of Racing News. Bloodstock South Africa's national yearling sale had everyone's attention this past week. The Racing News team was here and we bring you this highlights package. The national yearling sale is all about the horses. They do the talking and take centre stage here. And for prospective owners, this is where it all starts, with these glossy-coated, spirited youngsters, young pretenders to the crown and in search of champion status. Looking at them, one can't help but wonder which of them will go on to win Group 1 races and be attracted by the allure of international campaigns. There will be several of them, but which ones? Well, that's all part of the fun speculating which yearlings look most like future champions. The week before the sale was one for not only breeders to settle in their yearlings, but also for everyone else to socialise and renew acquaintances. Gary, how's the week ahead of the sale gone? It's been fantastic. I'd say it's exceeded expectations. Uh, all that we hoped for has come true. Uh, I think there's been a fantastic vibe uh, out in the sales arena. People are happy, the quality of the horses is there as well, so yeah, we're good to go. New Zealander Steve Davis has been auctioneering for the past 25 years. He's become a familiar face here on the rostrum at the National Yearling Sale. Steve, what's your assessment of the 2018 catalogue? Uh, I think it's one of the better ones we've put together uh, for the national sale. Um, you know, I think the people have gone out and selected the breeders that have prepared them and, uh, and presented them. I think it's probably one of the best drafts we've seen. In terms of the recent history of auctions in South Africa, could this be a defining sale? Look, I, I, I don't know whether it should be a defining, de declared that. I think we should be mindful of what's gone on uh, leading into this, you know, with the, the loss of two major buyers, with the fact that their horses subsequently being re-offered, so a lot of racehorses have gone out into the marketplace. It may be just one of those one-off years. I think we're tracking right. I think the decisions and the, and the, the, the work done in terms of setting up the catalogues, the sale dates, I think is, is a positive one. Uh, irrespective of what happens, and I hope it goes well, irrespective of what happens, I think you're on the right track. Uh, and maybe next year we might see some improvement, especially if the protocols, the export protocols are sorted. The National Yearling Sale is considered the time-honoured nursery of champions. So what is it that makes it the magical sale it is? I suppose history, um, uh, president, wonderful horses being sold on the sale. Um, Joburg's where the money is, um, it's a wonderful facility. And the weather's great, I mean uh, it does really help when the sun shines every day and the grass is green. But I suppose, yeah, history mainly for me. So I've been coming out for years and that, and you know, there's been a lot of people, different people running the sales and that, but I think since Mike Holmes and that have taken over, they've done a fantastic job, and yeah, we're looking forward to the years ahead. Because there's breeders from all around the country coming, and breeders are the most uh, wonderful family of people, and it's a genuine sale. And the buyers, um, I think that's why they come and support this sale. There's no smoke and mirrors here, and it's genuine. Probably the, the, this year is probably the vibiest sale I've been to. There's been more action and more lookers, and it's great having as many Hong Kong guys here, so I'm expecting an excellent sale. For me personally, it's to come and hang out with the breeders again afterwards and also to showcase what we've got. Um, you know, our pedigrees, our horses, our stallions. I think that's basically what it is for me. I just think, you know, if you look at uh, the, 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 the horses that have been sold out of the sale over the years, you've got Push Telegraph, and it's amazing above their boxes is a, is, a, is a fantastic placard, you know, showing what, you know, what, what have come out of these sales in the years gone past. Day one of Bloodstock South Africa's national yearling sale can only be described as buoyant, with both a strong and competitive middle to upper market. 121 lots were sold for an average of 555,000 rand, with total proceeds of 67 million. The first yearling sold was actually lot number two from Fassfontein Stud, knocked down to Chris Van Eekirk. By Flower Alley, out of a half-sister to Gypsy's Warning, who won five group races herself, the chestnut filly Keep Smiling was knocked down for 575,000 rand. 
Justin for Mark went to 500,000 Rand for Lot 11, a half-brother to French Navy. Justin, what was it about this colt that you just had to have him? Yeah, Michelle, a uh, very nice walking horse. That's the first thing I noticed when he came out the box. He had a great first impression and he was a great mover. And of course, the pedigree is there. He's by Dynasty, who's one of our, our greatest sires. He's up in Iliador Mare, who's a fantastic dam sire. And uh, the mare's already produced French Navy. He was a fantastic racehorse. And uh, Resolution as well by Shawies, he was a good racehorse. So the mare's a producer and um, the pedigree's there. He's a really nice colt and uh, happy to get him for the price we did. Where might he go, Justin? He's going to be trained by Johan Janssen van Furen here in Johannesburg. So um, the horse is for a client of his and uh, we'll look to put it together after the sale is complete. But uh, very happy with the colt and um, I think in this market we'd be happy to walk away with a horse for 500 grand like him, as I say, from a top sire like that and the specimen that he is. Candice, what was it about her that you liked so much that you had to have her? Oh, look, obviously, we her firstly her pedigree. I mean, she's got a fantastic pedigree, and uh, you know, we train Horizon, um, who's done really well, and uh, we've got the full sister who just won her second start very convincingly. So, you know, I thought she was a really nice filly. Um, she's got lovely things about her, she's a strong filly. Um, so, yeah, you know, she's got uh, all those things go together, and I think, you know, for that sort of money, you can never really go wrong pedigree wise either. So, and she looks to me like she, she can run too. Lot 45 has attracted much interest at the sale, a half-sister to group-winning Snowdance, this time by oh, Dynasty. Give me six chances in front, she's getting wary, Rosenblum is trying hard, Star Express is up the outside, but Snowdance keeps rolling, they can't beat her, Snowdance stays on to win from Star Express, Rosenblum, Sylvan Star up the outside was next, then came give me six. She was knocked down to John Freeman for two million rand. With John Freeman as busy as ever in his role as a bloodstock agent at the sale, he was back bidding before we had a chance to catch him. With me is Mark Richards, all the way from Hong Kong. Mark, it's wonderful to have you in South Africa and it's wonderful to have you at the sale. You've been busy. Well, we certainly intended to be busy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, of course, we were over in January down in Cape Town, but uh, it was very important that we let everybody know that we were going to be coming here as well. Um, I'm more than happy to, to be here and uh, I think there's some really good stock here so it makes sense to the Hong Kong Jockey Club to be here. You've just bought a lot, tell us about it. He's a Captain Al, uh, a sire that uh, has performed well in Hong Kong previously. Uh, lovely balanced horse, very very strong through his quarters, had a nice casual attitude about him. Uh, I kept, went back and looked at him two or three times and every time I went back he, he acted like an absolute professional. Uh, from a good family, I mean a filly that was able to win over a thousand metres but also up to uh, 2,000 metres. I hope that she puts her speed through into him but of course Captain Al would do that for us anyway. Uh, we concentrate pretty much about sprinting, miling types of horses. 80% of our racing is at a mile or less so we're looking for that speed influence and this, this particular yearling had all of that in him. Uh, he looked like a very sharp horse and as I say he had a very good family underneath him anyway. Mark, what is the plan with him from here? From here, he will uh, have to go through the quarantine areas that we have to go through, so uh, probably the Mauritius tour, uh, and then he'll go to the UK. He'll go and join up with the Northern Hemisphere horses that we buy in Europe, and uh, with the intention of bringing him over in March of two years' time, basically, uh, as a three-year-old. So he'll be a well-developed three-year-old by the time he starts his racing career. We've just had great excitement here at the National Yearling Sale with Lot 113. A Captain L going for 4.75 million Rand. Dean, you must be delighted. Yeah, he's a magnificent horse. And uh, we saw him on the farm about three months ago and uh, owner really loved him and uh, decided to have a full go tonight. So, um, uh, you know, well bred Captain L, you know, out of a champion race filly, uh, wonderful female line. So fantastic, uh, you know, for, for Jessica and Brits Fontaine and, and the whole team. And um, yeah, you know, we, we had to dig it down deep to buy. <laughs> and, uh, but John Malavia, yeah, we, we, we stuck to, to our guns, and should I say the owner stuck to the guns, but he is a magnificent. He's got the pedigree, he's got the looks, he's got everything. So uh, uh, we look forward to seeing him race one day, but they always look better when they stand in the winner's box. <laughs> Absolutely. What was going through you as those numbers started going up? Well, uh, you, know, I th you know, they were coming back strong at us, you know, and I thought, oh, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. You know, but I must say, I've, I've even got a dry mouth and <laughs> I'm not even going to sign the check. <laughs> so, no, magnificent also. I uh, hope we have lots of fun of them and uh, see how it goes. 
There were 12 million rand yearlings, which interestingly came from nine different studs. Maritzfontein and Drockenstein had three and two apiece, but then all of Riverton, Wurland, Ascot, Cheverly, Clipdrift, Wicklow and Wilkerwurstdrift posted one each. When it came to sires, it wasn't altogether surprising that Captain L topped the boards with no less than four yearlings going for over one million rand. But what was most encouraging for the industry was the faith and belief in first season sires, soft falling rain and Versen Jetterix, both of whom posted million rand yearlings. Day one of the national yearling sale showed promising results with an average of over 550,000 rand. Colin, what's your view on the sale so far? Uh, there's a great vibe this year at the complex. Um, it's a place where there's a great history about it with uh, plenty of champions that have been sold and gone through the ring. Here. Lindy, what's your view on the first day of the sale? Michelle, it's a bit stronger than I thought it would be. Um, and it appears if you've got a nice horse, it will sell well. well I think generally very good. Uh, it was a nice, nice positive attitude. There was a nice a solid bunch of buyers there and a nice underbelly to the sale that there was depth right through the outer sale. I think it's been great uh, considering the market and how it's been this year. It can only be positive and confident that it's going to get better. I think it's gone very well. Um, the vibe seems to be good. The complex looks good. It just everything feels right and hopefully it continues for the next two days. Session one at the Bloodstock South Africa National Yearling Sale ended on a positive note with the 163 yearlings sold averaging just over 600,000 rand. What this year's National Yearling Sale is showing is that some of the smaller breeders are also getting those top million rand prices. Lot 172, who started off the second day of the sale, went for 2.6 million. He's a colt from the draft of Birch Brothers, who brought just six yearlings to this year's sale. Colin, what did it feel like to see your horse knocked down for 2.6 million? Jesus, one of those experiences we haven't had for quite a while. Um, he's, he's an exceptional colt, he's had a lot of interest at the sale, so we were expecting a, a good price. Um, he's bred on the lines of Captain L, ex Fort Woodmere. Um, he's, he's, he's got the looks and he had the pedigree page to match it. Um, he's a colt with uh, plenty of X factor about him. And um, yeah, so I, I think uh, the interest in him was justified and we, we're over the moon. Yeah, we're over the moon. Seeing the, seeing the, seeing the numbers go up was, uh, was exciting, I won't lie to you. Yeah. He's going to uh, one of the best trainers in the world, Mr. De Kock. So he surely will get every chance. And uh, we couldn't be more happier with that. Day two here at the National Yearling Sale has started off with a bang. No less than five yearlings have been sold for 2.6 million rand or more in the first 20 lots through the ring. organization and Dean Kanemeyer were back at it again, yesterday having secured lot 113 for 4.75 million, they went up to 5.2 for 191. I'm a magnificent uh, dynasty cult and I've trained dynasty and uh, he looked like his father out of a very good female arm. She's already produced top horses and um, well grown, beautifully balanced horse and uh, I knew there was going to be a bit of fireworks, uh, there were a lot of people on him, uh, hence the price. Uh, but the um, owner stuck to, stuck to their guns, you know, international owner, and um, was quite determined to get the horse. So, you know, Jean Maleva, when he handed him the phone, I see his hand was shaking. So, uh, that was good. So, uh, great. As I said to you yesterday in a previous interview, that this is a wonderful catalogue and there's so many nice horses. The money's been very strong at the top market. We could see it started off, I mean, the first gold kicked off this morning at about 2.6 million. Again, we tried to have a tickle one early on. You know, and, and, um, you know, we, we, we stop it, we, uh, we thought we'd reserve all our gunpowder for this one. So, uh, there's still some nice colts at Lyheth. Great thrill and uh, hopefully he runs like hell. Dean, tell me, when you actually secure a horse at an auction like this for this kind of money, is the feeling similar to winning a group race on the track? No, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, when they're coming to the ring and you know there's going to be fireworks, you know, you do get tense, the mouth gets dry and the hand does start to shake and things yeah. like that, you know, and hoping that your owner will support you, which they 
which they've done and things like that. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter what they cost. When you win races like the July, the classics, group ones, you know, better feeling and hopefully that's why we're all buying these type of horses on, all on hopes, dreams and glory. Michael Shea and Murray McPeace are well known in the country now for their wonderful horse, Taking the Peace, who's done so well. Well, they're here at the National Yearling Sale and they've bought their second horse ever, Lot 232. How did this happen, guys? We thought we needed to give back back to the racing industry. I mean, yeah. Taking the Peace has been so good for us. Yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got more youngsters involved and that was the, the, the key to racing. And Craig Keesbetter. Correct, yes, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So, we, yeah, we needed a bit of bit of ammo behind us, but, um, yeah, Majest, Majesty, Majesty, she was good. We've already named her, still taking the piece. <laughs> but, yeah, we're very, very excited. Well, it's wonderful. And uh, what was it about the filly that you liked? I know you went and had a good yeah. look at her out back. Yeah, we had a good look. I think, similar to taking the piece, uh, she was the first one we saw, first one that came on. So, we had a few kind of reserves but I think as Mike and I you know when we like something we, we go for it so uh, luckily uh, I th again we went a bit out of budget uh, <laughs> but yeah. you know I think when you like something you got to go for it so I think we, we're pretty excited and um, we've, we've got a lot more friends coming into this now I think a lot of people have followed the story a lot of my friends who've never even been to a race they've all come they've they've uh, very excited they want to be involved so I think we're gonna have quite a few more people in this one and, and hopefully get a lot more youngsters and, and new people into the game and just try and experience what we've had, you know, whether she wins, loses, it's just about friends, it's about getting together, having a good time. Yo, baby! Sorry, baby. The session, which ended halfway through day two of the sale, with the fall of the hammer on lot 231, saw an additional seven million rand yearlings sold and a gross of just over 98 million rand. Again, first season sire, soft falling rain, caught the attention with a further two million rand yearlings, bringing his total in session one to three. Session two of the sale kicked off midway through the second day with the sale of lot 232. Although there was just one million rand yearling amongst this group of 118, with a reduced minimum bid of 50,000 Rand compared to the 100,000 in session one. Lots did sell, restoring confidence in the market. All bodes well for the start of day three. How is the sale going for you? Overall, it's a very successful sale for us at Fashion 10 and also for us as Groom. We are very proud to be part of the Fashion 10 team because we are very, I, last year we've made the highest Price this year too, so I think everything can just go better and better. When I had a tire foot and I got like a lot of feeling hard, so I got be able to feel them so I will be able to work with first one time so better. The sale is is working very good, and then we didn't expect the price we get this year, just because we prepare we prepare the yearlings to bring here in the sale, but we didn't show we cannot get this price. So so far we are very good, very happy. It's very excited. Oh, the sale well. This year, it's nicely, and all the things are right. Yes. Very happy. Happy, yes. I'm now up two years in call and calling. I'm work a clip trip and I make money, but not this year. We got a nice price. And I said for calling two years back now. This year, the team is going to make it for us good and change it. I think this year is better than last one. Eh? And because of uh, first one, they got 5.2. And Maritz van den got uh, 4.7, at least it's better. Free and fair trade continued throughout day three, with the market holding up beyond all expectations, despite the tough economic conditions. Somebody who's been involved in the game for many years, but not as an owner in his own right, is Alistair Cohen. He's just bought his first horse here at the National Yearling Sale. Yeah, lot 339. I'm very excited to uh, get a hold. Bred by Sandown Stud. Um, a lovely son of Flower Alley. Flower Alleys look to be the goods. They've certainly got a good reaction here yeah. at the National Yearling Sale, so I'm very excited. 
Did you go and have a good look at this yearling out back before? Yeah, more than once. Um, when I got here the first day that um, myself and Candace Dawson went around to have a look at the yearlings, we, I forced her, I dragged her to go and have a look and she was very optimistic, very happy, said he walked with purpose and uh, went to go and check again, make sure nothing went wrong and yeah, when, uh, when you look twice and it's the same reaction, it's yeah. a good thing. What was that emotion like when you were bidding? Oh, <laughs> it was the most nerve-wracking thing. I was actually just telling Mike Decock now yeah, yeah. that uh, with the pressure around me with Mark Shea, Murray Makepeace, Matthew yeah. Decock, and Johnny Gerudis and the rest of the boys, yeah. that if that had gone to six million, I would have been forced. That, <laughs> that peer pressure was something I've never felt before. Is it something that's going to remain with you indefinitely? Yeah, definitely. I just hope that uh, he's an ass horse, but he looks an ass horse. Sandown breed a good horse, so I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, my decision is justified but I'm, I'm optimistic and you know what it's a risk that we take that's why we have the sales and we all love the game so so let's hope for the best what's taking you so long to get into ownership on your own and buying a horse like this i actually think matthew de Kock deserves a lot of credit because last year um he got involved in a son of a loose fort that he bought for a syndicate on a mission and it was on a on a list of horses obviously last year i wasn't all that well it was on a list of horses that i was just keen on in pedigree and when i said to myself well if that goes to the right trainer for the right price i get involved and i saw de Kock, so i thought let me get involved and matthew just made you know even if it is a small share in a syndicate horse made ownership you know feel so good and now oh, it's about time i'm in the game so i might as well get involved in every facet i can there's been active interest in this year's sale from the east from both china and hong kong bought a quite a few horses, Michelle. I think I bought 10 and um, just a, a wide selection of stallions, but I think the better type of stallion that I think would suit where I train in Hong Kong. Um, so they'd be, they'd be going off to the farms now for a few months and then to my dad and uh, the better ones, <coughs> excuse me, we'll bring to Hong Kong. Yeah. When might that happen? Will they get in training and start running here first? Yes, they certainly will. Uh, so what we do is we have replacement permits and we have normal permits and then maidens can also come. So I have permits for all three of them. If, if we don't need to race, then we won't. But if they show ability, they certainly will be over. Yeah. It's encouraging to see that Hong Kong are showing a greater interest in our markets here. I think the only reason for that, Michelle, is the uh, quarantine, which they're talking about, is going to be relaxed come December. So that's the reason I'm here. And I'll, we'll be devastated if things don't work out. Um, but from what I'm hearing, everything's positive. So hopefully December, we'd be able to get the horses over. Yeah. The three-day sale ended with total proceeds of 140 million rand, an impressive increase of 25% on 2017. Form Bloodstock ended as leading buyers with Shahan Mal Herber signing for 37 lots for a gross of just over 22 million. Maritz Fontaine were leading vendors with the stud posting a robust 13 and a half million rand. Eight times champion sire of two-year-olds, Captain L was responsible for four of the top six lots sold. He grossed 21 and a half million for 15 yearlings knocked down. It's been a resounding success. Uh, I think it's uh, exceeded everyone's expectations. I, don't, I think there would have been very few people that, that would have had the courage uh, to predict an increase in the, in the aggregate. So given the events that prior to the sale, I think it's an unbelievable achievement. It's been a happy sale, there's been a spread of money, and I think we have happy buyers and happy vendors. So you can't really ask for more than that. And a good clearance rate. Yes. That brings this edition of Racing News to a close. To all of you who bought yearlings off the sale, we wish you every success with them. Until next time, happy racing. The Racing News Show and previous screenings are available online at www.goldcircle.co.za. Click on the YouTube icon, go to Playlists and click on Racing News to access all shows to date.